Hello, my name is Barb Schnecker and I'm from Hyde Park Bethlehem United Methodist Church bringing a word of encouragement and hope this Sunday. And as we uh, get ready to look at our scripture, which is um, the road to Emmaus passage where the disciples are walking along to Jerusalem, um, from Jerusalem to Emmaus, um, they encounter Jesus. And so I encourage you to think of ways in which during this, um, this stay-at-home order that you have encountered Jesus, because there are many ways in which Jesus is with us. Um, I would also like to um, remind you that there is a donate at hpbumc.org, which is listed below this um, video when you're watching, and um, we encourage you to continue to support the ministries here at the church because we are still um, in the ministry business and we are still trying to help others in our community and our church family. Thank you. While you think about the scripture today, I want you to think about how Christ is here with you and how Christ reveals himself to each and every one of us. And we need to be mindful that as we wait, as we watch, as we are in our homes and maybe going a little stir crazy or catching that cabin fever, that there is new growth. There is new growth happening. And how that God will reveal that in his perfect time and in his perfect way. So let us start with a call to worship. Stay with Christ, and Christ will stay with you. Listen for God, and God will speak. Seek the Spirit, and the Spirit will be revealed. For the Spirit is already here, inviting us to stay. Let us pray. Eternal God, we are here, yearning to know you more fully. So Lord, stay with us as we worship this day. Reveal yourself in the words that are spoken, the songs that are in our hearts and our minds and in the bread that is broken at each and every one of our tables. Help us to understand your truth and to embrace your life-giving power revealed within your enduring word. For it's in Christ's holy name that we pray. Amen. So I'd like to read from the Gospel of Luke the 24th chapter, beginning with verse 13. Hear these words. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us, they were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. 
Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it to be just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish are you! How slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. And as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, and he gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Do you see yourself somewhere, somewhere in that story? Somewhere in those words and somewhere on that road? You know, <clears throat> we too celebrate the Jewish Passover in a different way, but we celebrate what Jesus celebrated with the disciples. Scholars didn't know or don't know exactly where the town of Emmaus is located, but in our scripture it tells us that it's about a seven mile journey from Jerusalem. You see, these men were surrounded by other pilgrims who were making the same pilgrimage, the same journey back to their homes. So it was no great surprise to them when this man joined them, not knowing that it was Jesus, but they thought that he was among those that were traveling to and from. We can see an emotional roller coaster that's kind of taking place as we read that scripture passage together. You know, we're disappointed sometimes because we think that our leaders are the ones that will redeem us, will help us to rise above or to conquer, whether it be the coronavirus or an injustice, or you can put any, any narrative in there, but we look to our leaders. We looked to Jesus. These people looked to Jesus to redeem Israel. And they were disappointed that that didn't happen. They were looking not for just a leader spiritually, but they were looking for a ruler, someone to make things right. We go through that same kind of roller coaster in our own lives. It's been interesting to me to look up to see that <clears throat> the amount of, of days for the stay-at-home order has been 40, which is a significant number for all of us because we know that the number 40, Jesus was tempted and was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and, and that Moses, you know, there's a significant number of 40 with Moses, and, and just the exile um, in Egypt, and all those things, there's a significant number um, with the number 40. And so when we look at our own quarantined, our stay-at-home order, we see that there's a number 40 that comes up with that as well. 
So what do we learn when we are disappointed and the numbers aren't showing us what we need to see or things aren't going as we expected? Um, you know, a lot of people are now out of work and they're unemployed or they are drawing, trying to draw unemployment or, or there are people who have con contracted this coronavirus and are fighting for their very lives and, and we see that this has affected our economy. We're, we're kind of on an emotional roller coaster. We want things to go back to what we call normal, quote unquote. But what is normal? What is normal? So as our, as our joy turns to some, you know, other things and our hope, we're reminded that, um, that even the disciples back then were disappointed. And so, as Christians, we need to see the Messiah, as, see Jesus in a much larger picture. We need to understand that Jesus came to suffer and that at times we too, we too suffer, just like Jesus. We also understand that the Messiah came to be victorious, that the grave did not hold him, that he was all about the will of his Father. And we too need to be praying, thy will be done, thy will be done. Not our perspective, but God's perspective. God's kingdom comes not through our earthly governments, but through one human heart at a time. You know, <clears throat> we, um, we need to come to God and ask for restoration and his peace and hope and comfort. We need to trust that God is still at work. And even if God chooses to answer our prayers differently than we think, we need to know that God is still with us. God is walking this journey of life with us. This isn't the end. Sometimes um, we seem to think that when something comes to an end that there is this great, great grief and, and death. But sometimes instead of looking at death or the end of something as a burial, maybe, maybe we've been planted into new soil to grow new things and in new ways things that we've never thought of because we've become so complacent with the things that we always do. When we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us through Scripture, God brings that adjustment that we need to see that we have been planted instead of buried. And then when we ask God to come to our understanding, God does something a little bit amazing through the power of the Holy Spirit. God brings us into his plan instead of us bringing God into our plan. And we begin to see a much larger picture. We move, we move then in some type of alignment with God's will instead of our own will. And perhaps, perhaps as we sit at the table, and we bless, and we break bread, and we pass it among those that are with us, or we think about those that have been at the table with us. This transformation occurs, and Jesus is present in a real way. It also reminds us that <clears throat> of that last meal that Jesus had with the disciples in the upper room. It reminds us of the blessing and the feeding of the 5,000. It also reminds us of our scripture passage from last week when Thomas was told that Jesus was here. He was with us. But Thomas doubted. And unless he could see and experience with, for himself, he was not going to believe. But Thomas 
that experience with Thomas helped them to believe without seeing and open their eyes to Jesus. So do you realize that we need to see a bigger picture? The downcast can be gone. The rainy days will come, but there'll be sunshine. I don't know about you, but I get excited to see all the foliage and the new growth on the trees and the green grass and the fresh cut lawns and all of the things that help us to see new growth. After a long winter, when there wasn't any, the trees were there. The birds are chirping and, you know, we too can sense the presence of Jesus with us. We could learn a lesson from these men that were on the road to Emmaus. When the coronavirus might strike a loved one, or our money runs out or runs thin, a prognosis that we have probably been denying comes through and the hardcore fact hits us hard. Even our aches and pains and arthritis flares up. Or if a person rubs us the wrong way, maybe we need to pause. Maybe we need to realize that suffering is part of life. Maybe we need to realize that we need to not overreact, but we need to think about God's perspective. Maybe we could search for Jesus just a little bit harder to seek his presence in our lives and in the lives of others because Jesus is with us just like he was with the disciples on this journey on the road to Emmaus. We proclaim with Jesus that thy will be done. So this week, I want you to think about where God is speaking through his word, where Jesus is showing up in your life. I was listening to um, Dr. Amy Ogden this week, and <clears throat> she talked about a book that Viktor Frankl wrote in 1946 called Me in Search for Meaning. And she talked about um, in this book that she is finding strength that it's not only in our hoping alone, but knowing reality. And it's a balance of understanding reality mixed with hope. And she says that what we are building is a resilient path forward. That really spoke to me because I thought to myself, our faith in what we've always known might be tested. But are you willing to look at reality, to see where we really are, and have that hope and faith that what we are building into the future becomes a path of resilience and moving us forward. Amen. Let us pray. This prayer is from um, a New Zealand book of prayer. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit be our goal and our strength now and always. Amen. May you know that Christ is walking with you throughout this journey, whatever it may be. Have hope and have faith. Amen.